My name is Harriet DeWitt. I'm an experimental psychologist and I'm a professor at the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Neuroscience at the University of Chicago in Chicago. And I'm giving a presentation here at the ECNP meeting. And the topic of the presentation is on the effects of MDMA or ecstasy uh, on social factors and conversely the effects of social factors on responses to MDMA. So although historically people usually study or researchers typically study drugs under isolated conditions because it's much simpler to study the drugs without the confound of other people present, drugs like MDMA are often used in the presence of other people and in fact they seem to make social situations more positive and then social situations make the effects of the drug more positive. So we as scientists want to try and take this apart and understand what's going on. We'd like to know how it is that a drug like MDMA influences responses to social factors, people's facial expressions, emotional expressions, or even just pictures of social situations. And in one of our studies, we put the people in an actual social situation and study how they respond. And in the presentation that I'm giving, I'm comparing the effects of MDMA to the effects of traditional psychomotor stimulants. So MDMA is like a traditional psychostimulant. It has many of the same brain actions, but it has some additional features. It also increases plasma levels of oxytocin, which is a bonding hormone, and it also has strong effects on serotonin receptors. And so these two mechanisms might make the effects of MDMA a little different from the other stimulants. And so the focus of my presentation is to see what measures we can look at that we've looked at that have been studied with both MDMA and traditional stimulants to see how it differs. And it turns out that MDMA has, some, has effects that are very similar to stimulants on, on many measures. It increases feelings of well-being and arousal and energy. Interestingly, the MDMA, more than the traditional psychostimulants, also makes people report feeling playful and sort of more social in a sense. We also look at people's ability to detect emotions in other faces. So we present them with pictures of faces, emotional expressions, either happy or sad or angry. And MDMA pe makes people less sensitive or less able to detect anger in other faces. Whereas amphetamine does quite the opposite. Actually, amphetamine makes people more sensitive or more able to detect any emotions. So there's another, there's one way that the psychostimulants differ a little bit from MDMA, and that might be related either to its effects on serotonin or its effects on oxytocin. So in my presentation, I'll go through a series of different measures We're comparing the responses to, of traditional psychostimulants like amphetamine and methamphetamine to the effects of MDMA to see if we can understand what it is that MDMA does differently. Interestingly, MDMA is not only used for recreational purposes, but it's also used in the context of psychotherapy. So the answers that we get on how the MDMA affects people's social interactions could, could also help us to understand why it might be effective in psychotherapy as an aid in psychotherapy. So my relationship with, with ECNP is mainly as a visitor and as a visiting speaker. I've attended several times and I find it to be a very rewarding and scientifically solid meeting. I am a member of ACNP and so it's good to have bridges between ACNP and ECNP. The meeting has been terrific so far excellent science, very good attendance, and also very good personal interactions with individual scientists. One highlight of the meeting was a session on uh, psychedelic drugs or hallucinogens, which are gaining uh, some in scientific interest. They've been put aside for several decades as being not of scientific interest, and now people are taking another interest in that. So I was glad to see that.